Okay, so you know how to create dynamic Java proxies yourself, but that's not what Spring does by default. Rather, it uses a library called cglib to create proxies, and you'll find out what cglib is and how it works in this episode, so you don't freak out when you have to debug your Spring project. Let's check it out. Good, back in the uh, Spring Core Masterclass project, you don't have to add any new dependencies in the pomxml file, but you should add a new test class. And you can call it whatever you like, but cglibtest is fine. And then add a new test method, maybe introduction to cglib, like so, right? And for our example, we need a new senseless new class. Let's call it a cat class. And a cat has two methods. It can meow, which returns a string meow, right? And you might want to give the cat another class int age. And every cat in this example is exactly five years old. So whereas in the last episode where you tried to build a dynamic JDK proxies, you had to create an interface the iUserService interface for the user service class. Here, you only have the class itself, cat, you don't have an interface. And with cglib, the entry point, or one of the entry points, is a class called enhancer. So create a new enhancer here, so like so. Right? Make sure the import is right, and I'll talk about the import in a second because it's prefixed here with the Spring Framework. But in any case, cglib creates proxies by subclassing by creating a dynamic subclass of the cat class. So you'll have a subclass of cat. And what that means, you'll find out in a second. So, enhancer set superclass because cat is going to be the superclass here. And imagine, now just to see that everything is working as expected, when you, whenever you do a new cat, meow like so, you get a result back, right? And then you print out the result to the console like so, you run the class, and hopefully you're gonna see result equals meow. So everything as expected. Now your proxy, imagine your proxy wants to do something different. Instead of returning meow, it wants to return its own version of meow. So what you can do is enhancer set callback, new fixed value and say you always want to return meow by cglib, like so. And if you want, you can replace the whole, the inner class with a lambda, like so. Then call enhancer create. You get an object back, but the object is actually a cat. Make sure you cast the cat here. Right? And then you might want to do another system or principle cat meow and see what happens now. Because that line says whatever method you call on the cat class, just return meow by cglib. Let's check it out. Let's run the application again. And suddenly you see that cat meow, you just call meow on a new cat on the subclass that the enhancer created and it just returns meow by cglib and completely ignores the actual meow that the method would otherwise return. Now that's a bit weird. What happens if you call cat.h? Because up here, you just return a fixed value, a string, but cat.h returns you an int. Well, let's find out. It compiles, the so code compiles, but when you run it, you get a class cast exception saying string cannot be cast to Java long number which makes sense. So you need to get rid of the fixed value callback here and instead do something you did in the last episode already and that is creating a new invocation handler. Let's give it a bit more space here. And now remember method is the method you're proxying. Method could re refer to meow, it could also refer to age. So what you could do is something like if method get declaring class equals cat, 
So you only want to proxy cat classes, class methods, and method get return type equals string class. And that would mean only proxy the meow method, right? Then return something else. And otherwise, I'm just being a bit lazy here as an exercise for you. You can repeat the same thing and make sure it really only works for the int method. You could also make sure that you take the name into account if you want. But here I'll say, well, other than that, just return 10. So every cat suddenly is 10. Let's run the application again. And suddenly you see, well, cat meow returns you something else and cat age returns you 10. That is quite crazy. And when you debug the application and have a look, you'll see that cat is CGLib test cat. So that refers to our public static cat class. But then you can see it's a dynamic class, a dynamic subclass enhanced by CGLib. And that means you're actually having a subclass of the cat class. And you'll have all these callbacks in here, these CGLib specific callbacks, which could actually confuse you when debugging a real Spring application. But in any case, just know that you'll find these dollar dollar enhanced by CGLib classes uh, instead of just a pure cat class in, in this example. And the obvious advantage is you don't need interfaces. You don't need to pollute your code with interfaces just to create proxies. You can just take the enhancer and create subclasses and don't have to mess with interfaces. Even though there are some limitations like CGLib cannot proxy final methods, for example, but you can find out about these limitations on the CGLib homepage. One last thing is what I mentioned before already. And when you have a look at the imports, you'll see it says org spring from framework CGLib proxy. But CGLib is its own library, actually. But when you look at the external library section, you won't find it here. You only find the H2 database, JUnit, Hamcrest, and then a ton of spring libraries. But whenever I open up, let's just quickly open up Firefox, go to mavenrepository.com, CGLib. You can see that there's actually CGLib versions with group ID CGLib, artifact ID CGLib, and you would find them here. Why is CGLib inside of the Spring project here? If you step inside the class, you can actually see that it's in Spring Core. Download sources, just to make it look a bit nicer. The uh, answer is that Spring took CGLib, a specific version, and bundles that specific CGLib version itself. Why is that? Because in the past, I think, you have a ton of different libraries like Hibernate also using CGLib. And then you had problems with version conflicts and whatnot. And that's why Spring decided to bundle its own CGLib version. Right, but to sum things up, you now know what an enhancer looks like. CGLib has a lot more things to offer, but that is actually what's needed to understand what's going on because whenever in your Spring project, you add a transactional annotation to a class and don't have an interface, you'll have a CGLib subclass created for you automatically by Spring, and you don't have to create additional interfaces like you had to, to do in the past. Remember that, but that's all for today. Congrats, you now know everything there is to know about proxies, or almost everything. And that sets you apart from a ton of other developers, especially when it comes to debugging your Spring projects. Now it's time to have a closer look at another core area of Spring, and it's everything that has to do with databases. Opening up connections to a database, maybe setting up Hibernate and whatnot. So let's get right after it in the next episode.